So, um, uh, we've actually seen a major uptake of video consultation from about 1,500 uh, doctors uh, in January of um, this year to about 130,000 doctors that offer the service right now. And if you ask them, and we did um, just a couple of weeks ago, um, they, they really are surprised by how well it works. And many of them, the vast majority of them, want to continue the service even after the pandemic because now they've experienced the benefits of such digital interaction. Um, it's much easier to uh, actually uh, talk to your patients. The threshold between patient and uh, physician interaction is much lower. Uh, other examples, of course, is uh, home monitoring. Patients who are quarantined need to be taken care of. So we need to, uh, we need new devices, censoring devices to take care of these patients at home. And so a lot of uh, smaller companies have actually seized the opportunity to um, bring their products uh, into uh, circulation and really help uh, again to take care of these patients that, you know, we, we want to keep a close leash on them, but we don't really want to see them because for risk of infection. So um, uh, lots of examples. And then of course, also in the hospital space, there have been um, a lot of digital innovations. Um, um, one of the main ones um, um, was driven by the uh, uh, intensive care physicians in Germany themselves, because they recognized early on, after seeing what had happened in Italy, that they needed an overview of the capacities uh, within the intensive care world, um, and created an app that provides every day, every morning um, to this day, an overview of the uh, actual capacities of for intensive care treatments throughout Germany. So the, the idea, of course, is that patients, uh, to give patients optimal care, regardless of whether they are getting sick in a hot spot or in an, in an area that is less affected. So we can actually use all of our resources to best advantage to take care of these patients. And along with that, tele-ICU project sprung up. Um, we were able to solve um, um, seemingly um, um, a very difficult issues like, uh, um, like we had with uh, uh, data privacy or um, 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 sort of uh, taking responsibility for patients because now you have two teams interacting in the care of one patient. All of that was legally solved in a record time just uh, driven by the pandemic. So a lot of things have started moving because of the pandemic and I'm sure that's not unique to Germany. I'm sure you're seeing this all over the world and I can tell you I think this is just making up for a good five to ten years of gradual evolution. Now, this was not an, an necessarily a given because when we go back two years, and uh, Gottfried Ludwig alluded to this um, um, early on in 2018, there was a, a poll done by the Bertelsmann Foundation, and they found uh, the, the digitization, digital health index in Germany to be dismal, 30, uh, with the average being about 60. So we're really at the bottom of the, of the poll here. And, um, and that was really, um, and then also when you ask Europeans, many of them, the people really wanted uh, digital tools, but they didn't get them. Eight of 10 Europeans uh, um, thought that digitization can actually help their health care, their personal health care. In Germany, it was a little bit less, but still uh, only 25, 24% uh, thought that was not a good idea. The very vast majority did. And that was really um, sort of the starting point when uh, um, Jens Spahn, our Minister of Health, came to power. He sort of recognized very early on that if there is to be a future in healthcare, it is going to be digital. Um, so uh, he started working on, on, on bigger projects like the electronic patient record system and some of the stuff that we will talk about um, in the next uh, couple of, of minutes. As part of that um, um, sort of uh, um, uh, evolution, uh, the Health Innovation Hub was founded. Um, it's a team of 15 uh, experts with deep domain know-how um, at the intersection of digital tools and healthcare. Uh, and we really come from all kinds of uh, backgrounds um, um, with that, uh, within that intersection. From a legal point of view, we look at it from a regulatory point of view, an entrepreneurial point of view. But then we also have, of course, data scientists and uh, true medical experts, physicians, pharmacists, um, um, that type of uh, expertise to bring it all together to make sure that at the end we can fulfill our mission, and that is to implement digital tools to improve the health welfare of patients. And uh, there are really three, three different uh, levers that we try to sort of use. Number one, we scout for new ideas, and that's why you know, today's session is going to be very interesting also to me and uh, our team. Um, we um, then uh, really serve as an in-house think tank for the Federal Ministry of Health, um, which is great. We are, their, their only, uh, we are not their only consultant, but uh, they, are their own, they are our only customer. So um, um, you know, we, don't, um, uh, we can actually tell them what we truly think without having to worry about uh, the next gig. And, um, and then we support the implementation of various projects. Now, 
Um, the, the, the key, and that's the really the main belief of our group, and I think that's true, um, um, should be true for all uh, techies uh, who look at healthcare, is that technology is not an end on itself. Rather, it serves a purpose. It serves a purpose of actually improving medicine, improving the healthcare of patients. Um, as we look at the main challenges that uh, healthcare um, systems are confronting at this point, obviously there's patient safety. There is a demographic change which requires more productivity, otherwise we won't be able to pay for it long term. And then there is an, a, a virtual revolution in uh, the uncovering of the biological basis of our uh, organism. And um, um, we understand that we can exploit differences, genetic differences, um, to optimize uh, therapy and diagnostics. And if we want to do this, we need to embrace um, what has happened in another space, and that is in the techie space, in the digitization space, where there has been a, a revolution of sorts um, with cloud computing and uh, virtually unlimited storage at this point on one side. And on the other side, and I think that's uh, just as important, uh, we have um, found a way to provide people with ubiquitous access, unimpaired connectivity to these data. And uh, through these smartphones and the distribution thereof, uh, we've basically created a totally different uh, playing field that now taking together with the challenges of healthcare will provide better care, more preventive medicine, connected medicine, and individualized medicine. In doing so, um, over the past 32 months, um, um, German uh, regulators and German uh, parliaments have been, has been fairly busy. Uh, we've basically um, created a map of uh, different um, uh, initiatives uh, different uh, legal initiatives um, that are now coming together to form an all, all together a, a picture. Um, we didn't wait uh, on purpose until we knew it all and then came up with one law that solves everything, but rather chose an iterative process that consisted of six laws that focus on digital tools in medicine, and then 28 laws um, that actually uh, combine this uh, um, um, uh, sort of with digital health uh, uh, components uh, or rather, you've got to subtract them. So there's actually uh, um, then 22 laws that, that have these digital health components. So overall, um, we've created this map, this uh, sort of picture, uh, um, a regulatory picture, um, where we understand that it is not really perfect. It's an evolution. It will never be perfect. And when we look at this, we look at white spaces. And then sort of the question arises, is there something to be done to actually um, enhance uh, the filling of that white space with digital tools? So um, having, done, having said that, really the basis of everything that we're doing um, is the electronic patient record system. And you all know that there's tons of data out there that is being stored, uh, predominantly where it actually originated from. And so with the electronic patient record system within Germany for first time in a very heterogeneous system with um, um, 150 different uh, uh, statutory healthcare um, insurances, with uh, 1,800 hospitals, with 180,000 physicians in the ambulatory care. Um, all of these will be connected in addition to all pharmacists and um, actually um, bring together their data of an individual patient so that that individual patient will have their electronic patient record system, which is really massive. And, and, and I'm sure everyone listening is going to appreciate the, uh, the, the, the power that is associated with such an effort. Um, obviously, we're not the first country to do this, um, but I would say that we're probably the country which is, um, actually has added the most complexity to it because we chose a very safe path and, 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 and of course, we have a rather heterogeneous uh, healthcare environment. If you ask people before the pandemic, and this uh, poll was taken uh, in uh, January 9 and 10 of this year, um, about half of them will say, yes, I want this thing. I'm sure if you were to repeat this, about three quarters, 80% will, would say, yes, I want this data repository because I've seen through uh, Corona how important data can be and how important digital tools can be in helping me get, get my healthcare. In addition to that, we also recognize that um, digital apps were really uh, uh, being uh, um, developed. And of course, uh, they were available. And many of them actually had tons of users also in Germany. Unfortunately, in Germany, as in many other countries, they lack a true business case because remuneration was not really taken care of. And that um, really was changed with the uh, DVG Fast Track, um, where a business case for these uh, digital applications was created. And um, just the first two of these digital applications actually passed the certification process. And the big change here is that instead of waiting three years and having to prove the utility of your app with regard to patient benefit in RCTs, 
Um, um, so instead of going through all of that work over a long period of time with high bars, we lowered the bar to uh, um, the presentation of a credible um, a benefit hypothesis that is being um, um, looked at by uh, uh, obviously regulators. When if they find this is credible, then the app will actually be introduced into the normal statutory healthcare system with 73 million insured people, so 73 million potential customers. It is, by the way, the largest homogeneous uh, healthcare market in the Western world. And uh, we're opening that market for 12 months to gather data to answer the question, is there benefit uh, associated with this app or not? Obviously, the app needs to be safe. Uh, it has to have CE mark. And uh, there are a bunch of other things, particularly as they pertain to data privacy and data security that uh, need to be uh, taken care of. Um, we actually, uh, as I said, uh, did just see um, the first two of these apps come to fruition, Calmeda, um, which uh, looks at tinnitus patients, and then uh, Vilibra that uh, actually looks at patients with uh, intermittent depression. Um, and um, so these two apps can now be prescribed by physicians in a manner very similar that they, they would prescribe a medication or that they would pr uh, prescribe other medical uh, support products like crutches or things of that nature. So that's really new. So it's really software as a medical product um, that uh, can now be prescribed and is part of the regular care of the state insured uh, system, insurance system that we have in Germany. And of course, your imagination can run wild with regard to what kind of uh, uh, apps uh, uh, can be uh, uh, applied. If you're interested in finding out more, I recommend um, the, uh, you reading the Diga Vademekum, which our group has uh, put out. Um, it's basically, unfortunately, at this point only in German. We're working on an English translation, uh, which will make it clear of how to go through the process. It's not obviously trivial. After all, we're dealing with medical products. We're dealing with healthcare of patients that are relying on the safety and the functioning of these products. So this is not, you know, this is not a gimmick. This is rather serious. You still have to put in a lot of effort, but um, compare this to what, what we had before. Uh, we really opened the system massively, and I would expect uh, the next 20 of these apps to actually come into the market over the next three to six months. So uh, really a, a, a very uh, a, a interesting sort of atmosphere for startups, but not only for startups, also, of course, for large companies. And um, as if this was not enough, um, Germany has just started a massive um, initiative for uh, digital um, tools in hospitals. In fact, uh, the government has pledged 4.3 billion euros to be spent over the next 24 months on the digitization of the German hospital environment. Um, there are 11 content areas where money once is, is, to, be, is to be spent. Uh, for instance, closed loop medication, um, obviously, uh, you know, computerized automated physician order entry, most hospitals would actually have that. Um, but then there is uh, tools to support uh, ERs, uh, um, uh, planning, bed planning, uh, and many other sort of areas of uh, content that are going to be supported by these government um, uh, grants. They're not repayable. This is really a payment. This is really just a sort of support to um, get the digital uh, world in hospitals moving. Just how massive this is, uh, just one number for comparison, the uh, um, a market size for German digital uh, digitization in German hospitals is about 1.3 billion annually. Um, so we're now adding 4.3 billion over two years to that number, which is really quite massive. So uh, I hope that uh, I was able to uh, portray to you that number one, um, digital tools should really always serve a, a larger purpose. And that is, uh, uh, you need to be measured. We all are going to be measured by outcome, by patient outcomes. Uh, are we going to be able to uh, make patient lives better, uh, improve their health care with these tools? Uh, otherwise, they are just an end on, on themselves and really worthless um, from a healthcare point of view, at least. And the second is, um, um, yes, Germany is open for business with regard to digital healthcare um, because um, uh, really two things coincided. And um, I wish the second part had not happened, which of course is the corona pandemic that everybody is suffering uh, 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 through. Um, but we actually are lucky that we started laying the foundation for the implementation of these digital tools really just a year. We just started about a year and a half before uh, corona hit. I wish we would have started earlier, and I'm sure we would be better off uh, for, for that. Uh, right now, um, we're just glad that we did start and we did lay a foundation. And based on that foundation and the experience with Corona, 
which will drive acceptance of people as well as of physicians. I'm sure um, um, healthcare in Germany will become a lot more digital than it has been in the past. And with that, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, Federica, I'm happy to sort of turn it back to you. Yes, thank you very much for your time and for your insights. And I think we all learned a lot about this. A digital claps from all attendees um, from my side and uh, from everyone. And thank you for taking the time. I also think that it's important to see what Germany and the Health Innovation Hub does and that we are all kind of going to the same direction and having the same goal to really, um, yeah, benefit the patient and have a healthier and better life for our patients. And uh, this is what this is all about of our lives and healthcare is more important than ever. And I think it's great where this is going. And it's very motivating for startups as well to see how this is directing to. And uh, thank you very much for your time and for the presentation, Mr. Debating. Thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, good luck with your, uh, with your session. And uh, really congratulations to all the work that you've done. And if I may just say this, you know, healthcare is probably the only field that I know of that provides an, at the, an intersection between, you know, having a purpose and, uh, and really being at the forefront of technology. So it's a very privileged situation and uh, it's a lot of fun. That's true. I agree. Thank you very much. And we hope right. that you can stay online and um, that you can join us for the startup pitches and um, that you get to meet our startups as well. Well Thank do. you. All right. Thank you very much.